hello everybody welcome back to my channel today we'll be looking at data modeling and this is our get into power bi series where i'll be releasing short videos on using power bi and pro tips to make it better so subscribe if you haven't and let's go straight into it so today i'll be talking about how to import data into power bi and also how to create a data model so to do this i'll be importing three data sets a csv data file on games sale and i'll be creating a data model and data model is cleaning your data maybe creating calculated columns and using those to connect one data to another so let's get straight into it so we're going to get data and it will be a csv file so this data would be xbox data set PS4 data set and the overall games data set. So I'm getting three files to be able to show how we can connect these files together. So importing this in Power Query, we can see the column distribution and also the column profile of each column in our data set. So what we can see is year has a high number of errors and this is because a lot of data is missing in the year column. But in the game column, which would be our unique identifier, we can see that two of the um, values in there are duplicated. And so I'm going to reduce rows and remove duplicates just to make sure that there are unique rows in, in this. Tip. Because the assumption is that PS4 will be naming each game uniquely. Um, so we can also replace errors, but we're going to leave that for today. So I'm going to import the video games. So this includes PS4, Xbox, and all the other platforms. And also we're going to import a, a separate export data set. So these data sets are found on Kaggle, and I'll be leaving a link to that below if you want to download and join. I'm going to remove duplicates again in the export data set. And what you can see is that Power Query lists the steps that you've applied to the table, as well as the first three automated steps that it applies to every table imported. And the good thing is that you can rename the steps. For example, if we replace null values in the video games table to zero, by right clicking on the null value, you can click replace value. And you can, it could be null, it could be you want to replace, replace zero values, but today we're going to replace null values with zero. And we can now rename this step to reflect what we have done. So we can rename it to replace null with zero so that a colleague can, or yourself, can look at this in, in future. And remember what you've done and maybe why you've done that. The other way to see some of the things that are done with a data set is by going to the advanced editor and it will, it will, it will show you the scripts behind the cleaning, behind your data. And this is an M, it uses the M language. And you can customize this yourself instead of clicking you can write this out but it's called advanced editor and i think for you to play around it with this you should be very comfortable with power bi before you start doing that so we're going to close and apply and where we'll play with the data in the power bi desktop away from the power query so the first thing we see is our report view, which includes the fields. So our tables and the fields in each table, the visualization pane, so where we have our default visualization, and also the filter pane. But we also have the data view, so where we can actually see the data that we've imported in tabular view, and so the columns and the rows. But we also have the model view, which is where we create our relationship between tables if we need to do that. So this allows us to see our table and you can use the star schema to arrange your table and create relationships. 
but we're going to you know, focus on that today. I'm just going to show you how to create a relationship practically. So you can create a relationship from your model view. You can create it from the data view. So there's so many options to do that. But we're going to start by creating a unique ID. I already pointed out that in our Xbox table, we expect that the name, the name of the game should be unique. But just to be able to link it to the overall table, we're going to add, add an Xbox identifier. So we're creating this by using an AND, which is a concatenator of text here. So we're concatenating XP to the name of the game. And that's what you can see. So we're going to do the same in the video games table. And this time, instead of using a, a, a text that we've written out, so we're going to call on the platform column, which represents Xbox, PS4, and all the other platforms that produces games. So we're going to say platform and and because we added a space when I was creating the previous one, we're going to add a space and the name of the game, which is named name in this table. And we are doing, going to do the same for our PS4 table. But just to have a look at what we've created so we can see that Xbox, we know this is this game is created by the X by Xbox. So we're doing the same for the PS4 table. So unique ID. It doesn't have to be named the same across tables for you to use it as a join key or as a relationship key. And um, that's a good point to know. So PS4 space and the name of the game, which is named game. Okay, so now we're able to create our relationship. So I'm just showing that we can create it from the data view or from the model view or by dragging, simply dragging the unique ID onto the unique ID in the table that we're looking to, to create a relationship and Power BI automatically identifies that it's a one-to-many relationship or many-to-one and it's either single or both. So we're going to see what it it did so it's unique to unique and then many because x the the platform the overall data set has some duplicates and then unique in the data that we cleaned so again the overall has many which if we actually clean the overall table it should be unique for we because we expect that one platform should have one game named just one one game named the same so we shouldn't be naming two games the same so just to show you some of the practicalities of connecting tables is for example we want to see game by year and we can see that some year values are missing so what we can then do is take our year value from the overall table data set and um, because if the, it is the overall table data, so we're going to remove any that is blank because these blanks are from the overall table data set but not found in the PS4 table. So, um, again, this is just a quick how we can use why and why we need to create relationship. That's when we have values from a table that we don't have in a table of interest. So we create a relationship between these two. And we can then play with three, four tables um, to create our visualizations that are interactive and gives more value to the audience. So I'm just creating just a first view of trying to create a report. And here is the sales across different places. So Europe, Japan, rest of the world, global, North America. And again, we can do some data modeling in away from Power, Power Query. And this time we're going to change some of these columns to be actual, to be currencies, because we're assuming that these are the sales made in these places. So I'm just changing them to currency, just so that the, ta the tables or the graphs you create are easier to read. 
actually I'm not meant to change here to a currency so I'm just going to change it back to uh, a number by removing the currency okay so thank you for joining me in in this um particular video i hope to see you in the next video where i'll be showing you how to create an interactive report using the same data set so subscribe if you haven't and share thanks